morning and welcome to the Isles of Scilly. This morning we had no idea what we we're going to be doing because the way in which it works here, unless you actually want to stay on the island where you're staying, you don't really truly understand what's on offer until you get down to the quay. And there are blackboards and they let you know what boats are going to be going out and what specials there are. And um, we've just seen that there is a Bishop's Rock Lighthouse special that is also going to drop us off on St Agnes. So that's where we're headed today. As would become routine for each morning of our visit, we made the long walk along the quay and down the steps. Today, we'd be sailing on the Sea King. As we left St Mary's, we had a spectacular view of the quay end of Hugh Town, the garrison walls, and the Star Castle Hotel perched up on top of the hill. We made a brief stop at St Agnes to let a few passengers off who weren't joining us on the wildlife boat trip before quickly setting sail again. The sneak peek of the island's quay and that of its coastline from the boat made me all the more excited for our return that afternoon. Sometimes I'd look out onto the water and not see much, until suddenly seabirds would begin to fly off for the next stretch of tide to catch their next fish and there'd be hundreds of them. The easier to spot birds were the ones right up on top of the sea rocks. Anna Islands are closed to on-foot visitors all year round and especially in spring, it's home to breeding puffins and manx shearwaters who burrow into the short grasses. The aggressive gulls prey on the puffins, so they spend daylight hours at sea and then as night falls, return to their chicks. I got very excited when we spotted a seal perched on the edge of a rock, but little did I realise what was yet to come on the boat trip. We frustratingly had picked the wrong side of the boat to sit on and unlike other wildlife boat trips we've done previously, the boat captain didn't turn the boat around to make it fair for all passengers when we saw something cool. But between the other passengers' heads, we watched on as seals gracefully swam in the waters, curiously popping their heads up to check us out as much as what we were checking them out. As we progressed along the western rocks, we saw more several of which were sunning themselves on the rock, some a little agitated by their fellow seals, some were virtually passed out, and others who were getting comfy. We then set sail away from the rocks and out across what felt like a vast ocean, and I was so grateful that it was a calm day. We were headed for Bishop's Rock, the loneliest address on Scilly. This is one of the most exposed lighthouses in Britain and it's open to the Atlantic and the waves and swells that often come with it. Whilst even on a calm day like this, the steps etched into the rock and subsequent ladders up to the door look menacing. I can only imagine how isolated it must have felt during the never-ending storms. In 1874, 40 metre waves had washed over the tower, taking the lantern with it and flooding the lighthouse. The keepers inside were lucky not to have drowned. What we see today is an outer shell constructed in 1882 around the earlier version of the lighthouse. For 134 years the lighthouse was continuously occupied until in 1992 it became fully automated. So where are we? <laughs> we have arrived at the island of St Agnes. The water is crystal clear. The sun is shining, which is nice. And the boat ride was a lot less choppy than what I was expecting. So overall, I'm really happy to be here. St Agnes has another island called Goo that's attached to it when it's low tide so you can walk across a sandbar. As we were getting off the boat, the boat captain did explain we need to make sure that we're back across by 10 to 3 at the latest to not get cut off by the higher tides. So we're just walking across it at the moment which is a little bit interesting. I'm getting sand all in my trainers and we're going to go and have a little bit of an explore on Goo first and then we'll head back to St Agnes. Lunchtime now, as always, we like to try and eat lunch with a spectacular view if we can find one. 
and it really was not difficult to find a spectacular view such as this one. Made by me. Made by Andy, yes. I was a bit delayed this morning. Cheers. Oh, they're really good. Oh, yeah, very so I good. made them. Looking back in the prehistoric times, no one lived on the island of Goo until in the 1940s when a couple of cottages were built. It means that there is a very small population, but definitely in single digits. So when those tides come up and the bar is filled with water and it does make this a genuine island, it's the smallest of the inhabited islands out of all of the ones that exist. We're just wandering along the island's coastal path, but it does take us inland every now and again, and we're coming across a whole plethora of different flowers, and it seems to have attracted lots of the insect wildlife. We've also got the coastline, which is giving us lots of seabirds. There's the odd beach, I mean, white sand, but then also super rocky as well, and lots of like seaweed in the water. It's just full of so much diversity. But there are some signs up saying that if you've got a dog with you, you need to keep it on a lead between the end of April and the beginning of September. I had read up saying that you've got to be careful because some of the seabirds, if they feel like we're a threat, they will bomb dive you and I guess with their beaks make a bit of a damage to your head, but thankfully none of them have come and tried to attack us, so I guess they, they don't see us as being threatening. During the Bronze Age, burial chambers here on the Isles of Scilly seem to be the most popular for commemorating those who passed away. But towards the end of the Bronze Age, they then did turn to cairns, such as this one here. Apparently out of all of the burial cairns on the Isles of Scilly, this one, the Old Man of Goo, is the most well known. And I think probably one of the reasons for that being is that all around here, there aren't any other rocks. And so sometimes in other parts of these islands, it can be a bit difficult to spot a burial cairn when it's hidden amongst lots of other natural rocks that have just formed in around it. This here is one of the Bronze Age burial chambers. It's obviously long gone been looted, but they seem to think that it was probably constructed somewhere about 2000 to 1500 BC. They can be quite difficult to spot, particularly as the hot weather goes on well into the summer as the bracken really starts to grow up around it. But apparently this particular island of Goo has a considerable amount more than what the rest of the Isles of Scilly have got. But this is the only one that we've been able to spot and it's very late May at the moment. There are apparently some of these sorts of burial chambers in West Cornwall, but the few that there are on the mainland are far outnumbered by the 70 or so that are on the Isles of Scilly as a whole. We've just crossed back over the sandbar to St Agnes again, but what I've just gone and learned is that apparently the saint of St Agnes was added much later. Locals just tend to drop it and call it Agnes. Now, I didn't pick up on this, but Andy said that when the boat captain dropped us off and announced that we had arrived, that he too just referred to it as Agnes. So the next port of call is exploring what this island's got to offer. We've decided to make a beeline straight for the Troy Town Farm because we've heard that they are supposed to serve amazing ice creams. We've only been walking for a couple of minutes and already straight away we can see huge differences. So to begin with, there is a gorgeous, I want to say paved path, but actually I think it might be more like a, a concrete. And then there's a lot more businesses. We've seen the Tax Head Pub, which is the one right next to where the ferry dropped us off. We've just kind of walked past a pizzeria place. We obviously are headed towards a farm that sells ice cream. And I think they might also be the owners of the campsite. I'm sure we'll discover it when we get there. It's just got a very different feel to it, a little bit better kept and a little bit more cared for, I guess.
wandering along this path we've come across a notice board and then right next door to it is the post office and it's tiny and so quaint and then i think what's really cute is that someone's just put a mountain bike up against some bushes here they've not bothered to lock it away and i think much like all of the honesty boxes that seem to be scattered around the island where you just are honest and leave a little bit of money and you take the goods that you want to take people also feel like it's fine just to leave like really expensive things like mountain bikes out the other thing that we noticed on the notice board is that they said that the rubbish collection is changing which has got me wondering if this is the only way around the island on a footpath do people have to bring their rubbish somewhere for it to be taken away or i don't know because you're not going to be able to get like the big refuse trucks along here so if you know if you know how people on the off islands where there's not roads get their rubbish collected please do share in those comments underneath So the Troy Town ice cream is attached to a farm whereby the milk that comes from the cattle is what makes this stuff. They did have some tubs but I figured the big ones that she could scoop out would probably have been the most fresh. Unfortunately whilst we were waiting in the queue someone came out and removed the apple crumble flavoured ice cream and then there was a huge groan from everyone in the queue and it was actually a customer and she was like I didn't get any either. And it just reminds me of when that happened at the Sam Seafood Chuck when we were up on the Isle of Harris. So I've decided to go instead of the apple crumble one which I totally would have done with a white chocolate and a salted caramel ice cream we've just wandered a few footsteps from the little hut where they were selling it from it's got a line of picnic benches overlooking the campsite which I think is also part of the farm and then just stunning views over the waters I'll try it now oh my goodness that's obviously the salted caramel ice cream so creamy and like super salty as well but in a good way i feel like it's got more than normal salted caramel but it's not a bad thing it's really nice The St Agnes Lighthouse is one of the oldest ones to have been built in the UK back in 1680. A boat captain this morning explained that the lighthouse was pretty rubbish. The way in which they generated the light was through a coal fire up at the top, but naturally that generated an awful lot of smoke, which then dimmed the amount of light that could come out of it. It was described as mostly having a red glow to it, and unfortunately many ships were still crashing into the rocks, especially during the poorer weather conditions and during foggy conditions too. Another thing that we've also noticed having a wander around it is that it's not actually right up against the water it seems to be quite inland on the island but we're not too sure if that's maybe because this is probably the highest point within the island we've come back to the ferry port where we got dropped off earlier and obviously we're having to come back to to get back to st mary's the last ferry is at quarter to five and it's probably about 25 to five at the moment it's a little bit earlier than I would have liked so we have left a bit more time just to have explored the island but thankfully we're here for a week this is our first day if we really want to we can always come back and explore the, the, the bigger island of the two on another day but best go get a seat on the boat before they run out.